Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Circle K 101 webinar. We're going to start our webinar in just a minute. Please hang tight and we'll get started momentarily. Thank you all for coming and we'll get started very soon. Thank you. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the Circle K 101 webinar hosted by the Kiwanis Family Foundation Committee. We are very, very excited to have you all with us today. We're gonna get this webinar started right now. Hold on to your seats, it's gonna be an amazing webinar filled with lots of information about Circle K, how you can get involved and different ways so you can just improve your membership experience in Circle K as a whole, whether you're a new member or an old member. So before we get started, um, just a couple things I want you all to keep in mind. So first, we have a webinar sign-in form. To make sure that you get credit for your hours by attending this webinar today, please go to the link http colon backslash www.tinyurl.com slash KFF webinar sign-in. This link was also posted on our Facebook event for this webinar. So you can sign in um, with your name, school, and, that, and division, so that way we can count your hours and your attendance today. And then also we have a question submission form. So which is tinyurl.com slash KFF webinars questions. Uh, by going to this link, you'll be able to submit a question that you may have for us that we will approach in our Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Um, the link for the qu question submission form will be at the bottom of the majority of the slides. So in case you ever forget, it's right there for you, we promise. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, hello, my name is Angelica Yubunjin. Uh, I'm a second year from UC Riverside. Hello, friends. Uh, I'm Amanda Wong. I'm a second year, and I'm from Sac State. And hello, everyone. My name is Nick Stringfellow. I'm a third year from UC Los Angeles, and I also serve as the KFF Committee Workshops and Webinars Coordinator. Um, so starting off with what is Circle K International, um, we're the largest collegiate service organization in the world and is linked with Kiwanis Family. Uh, we have 14,000 members in 19 countries and 550 campuses worldwide. Um, our California, Nevada, Hawaii district alone has 60 clubs. 
Uh, we are a student-led organization, meaning that we plan the services, we raise the funds, and overall work as a whole to improve the club and make it stronger. Uh, our three tenets are service, fellowship, and leadership. Uh, we'll go into more detail about these later, but these are pretty much our principles that we focus on and pretty much what embody our entire organization. Uh, Circle International, Circle K International also has four levels, which are club, division, district, and international. And we'll also go into more detail about this throughout the webinar. So Circle K International as an organization has a vision and motto that we want to share with y'all. So the vision of Circle K International is to be the leading global community service organization on college and university campuses that enriches the world one member, one child, and one community at a time. Circle K International is the largest collegiate service organization in the world. With all the members that we have across all the countries that we serve in, as an organization together, we are making a big difference in the communities that we serve and in the world as a whole. And this vision statement very much represents all the things that Circle K International is doing to make an impact in the world around us during our college years. And then the Circle K International motto is live to serve and love to serve. So we're going to go into the uh, levels of Circle K International. Um, Circle K at the club level, we have four different um, levels. The first one is the executive board. It has the president, vice pre president, secretary, and treasurer. Below that is the appointed board, depending on what the executive board needs each year. Um, for example, the service chairs, Kiwanis, family chairs, spirit social chairs, fundraising chairs, um, those type of appointed board members. Um, below them is committees. So each um, appointed board or executive board positions also have a committee depending if they need it or not. So for example, service, Kiwanis family fundraising, and some special events like so single service. Um, and after that, it's the general members, which is you guys. Wow. Uh, so then on a divisional level, uh, our CNH district consists of nine divisions. Uh, we have northern divisions, which are Capitol, Golden Gate, and Sunset, which has schools like UC Berkeley and UC Davis. Uh, then we have central divisions, which are Central Coast, Foothill, and Desert Oasis, which has clubs like Mount Sac and UC Riverside. And then lastly, we have Southern Divisions, which are Metro, Magic Kingdom, and Paradise, with schools like UCLA, UCLA and OCC. Um, each division is based on your school's geographical location, meaning that all the schools in your division are relatively around the same area and region. Uh, additionally, each division has a Lieutenant Governor, or LTG. Uh, they serve as a liaison between the district and the schools in their respective division, and they're pretty much there to provide schools with suggestions and support in order to succeed as a club. Um, there is also um, appointed division leadership team, and they help to foster the division experience, and by assisting the LTG and providing new division ideas, and really get the divisions and clubs to interact more amongst each other. Uh, but um, the, this varies with each division, and it's pretty much based on what the LTG believes that um, the club and divisions need. So Circle K International at the district level. So there are two different levels for this. The first one is district board. So we have the district governor, district secretary, and district treasurers. Below them, we have lieutenant governors, which are the governors for each specific division. After that, we have district chairs. So these are appointed after district governor, secretary, and treasurer are elected into position. So each, each um, we'll go into that later. And then we also have a district administrator as well who overlooks our Cal California, Nevada, Hawaii. After them, we have district committees. So the committees that we have are service, 
Football Training Conference, District Convention, Kiwanis Family and, Founda Family Fa and Foundation, Member Development and Education, Finance and Fundraising, Communications and Marketing, Member Recognition, and um, I think the last one is Laws and Regulations. So, yeah. And then above the district level, we have the international level of Circle K. So immediately above the district is a system across international that's called the subregion system. So a subregion is a region that's mostly geographical based and it consists of multiple districts within the same geographical region. So for example, subregion B, which encompasses most of the Western half of the US, um, includes CNH, our district, the Southwest district, which is um, Arizona, New Mexico, and part of Texas, and then the Rocky Mountain District in the middle west of the U.S. Um, those create our subregion, and there are other subregions across international that districts become a part of, and they are all monitored by a trustee who serves a, as a liaison between international executive board, international board as a whole, and also the district that they serve. And then we have an international board as well. So we do have an international president and vice president as well as an international trustee at large, who is a trustee that works with the clubs that may not belong to a district yet. Um, a lot of these clubs are spread across the world um, in countries that we have recently developed Circle K clubs in, such as Japan and Europe and other clubs in Asia, as well as sub-region trustees who, like I mentioned earlier, are the ones who work with the districts that they serve within their sub-region to ensure that the districts are succeeding in every way possible and providing support from the international level to make sure that they succeed. We also have international committees like at the other levels of Circle K. Uh, some of the international committees that exist include membership and marketing, international service committee, international Kiwanis family relations committee, um, CKIX planning, which is for international convention and other committees such as those. There are more committees out there that if you want to look up, you can check out the Circle K International Facebook page and also their website. And then there's also CKX and LSSP, which are the main international events um, held at different locations every year. So CKIX stands for CKIX, CKI Experience, and that is our international convention plus our large-scale service project, or LSSP, uh, put together for four days, uh, four to five days in late June, early July. So for this year, for example, we have our international convention, or CKIX in San Antonio, um, July 5th through the 9th. So that's an opportunity for you to get involved at the international level as well. Uh, so now we're gonna go into the three tenants. Um, so the first one is service. Um, service is the core and like the main purpose of this organization and it's probably the reason why a lot of us joined in the first place. Um, so we have our district service initiative um, and it's pretty much a specific cause that the district wants to focus on for that year. Um, the DSI can be implemented in multiple ways such as service and workshops. Term, our DSI is called Serve to Conserve Planet Conservation, which pretty much aims to improve the environment in various ways and reevaluate our carbon footprint. Um, there are a lot of ways that you can serve your community. Uh, on a smaller scale, you can have services um, on your own ca campus. Example of this are like uh, campus cleanups. And my home club at UCR has weekly services called Plan Your Own Service, where um, has a service idea like uh, making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the homeless. They can host that service on campus. And on a bigger scale, and a more common form of service that we do is outside in our community. Examples like this are running or walking marathons um, and different conservation projects. Uh, there are a lot of ways um, and a lot of opportunities to serve your community and all these services have different purposes and different causes, but they're all made to improve and aid the community as a whole. So the next tenant is leadership. So 
there are different ways to show off that you're a leader. One is by chairing an event. So chairing an event, you don't have to exactly be a board member to chair an event. You can be a general member. Next is taking on a board position. So board, board position, you can also become an appointed board member if you don't want to be an executive board member. Next would be committees. So there are different committees for each level. There's club committees, division committees, district committees, and international committees, which are usually posted within the group pages or also on cnhcircleK.com or .org, I mean. And lastly would be hosting workshops. So you can host workshops at fall training conference, district convention, spring training conference. And I think there was one more but I'm not too sure about that. But those are the general workshops that you could go or you could sign up for. And then the last of our three tenets is fellowship. So for me personally, fellowship has been a major part of why I stayed in Circle K, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But for fellowship opportunities that make up Circle K, you have club socials and events. So different clubs can offer different socials. So for example, I know UCLA and other clubs do museum nights where we go to different museums around LA. There's karaoke socials, which I, which I know that Sac State Circle K does and other clubs do as well. Um, dinners with other, other club members around like your school or on campus, off campus, and even more. And the club socials that are available to you are very, very numerous. And it's a great way to meet other members in your home club. And there's lots of opportunities to connect with people outside of your home club as well. Um, you can go to events at the division level, the district level, and beyond. And I can guarantee you will probably make, make a new friend by the time you leave. So for socials and events at the division and district level that you can get involved in. Um, so at the division level, you have divisional council meetings, which happen on a monthly basis and are led by the lieutenant governor. And from that, you can meet other members in your division, as well as participate in the program that the division leadership team puts together. There's also fundraisers you can do um, across your division. I know different divisions have different fundraisers. There are beach bonfires that could do like a social uh, with other clubs. There are member retreats that you can do within your division or if they're available or with your home clubs as well and even beyond that. And then there's also at the district level, team activities at fall and training conference where you get to meet other people across the district and participate in lots of fellowship activities. Super, super fun if you're going to FTC um, in, in a couple of weeks. Um, district convention has lots of fellowship opportunities as well as we all celebrate a wonderful year together. Scavenger hunts at district professional development conference and even more. And there's many, many ways outside of the listed opportunities that we've talked about here for fellowship and as well as all three of the tenants. And no matter where you may look, there's always going to be a way for you to get involved as a member, no matter if you're new or old. And we hope that you take all these, all these three tenets, put them together, and help enhance your membership experience. So beyond the three tenets of Circle K and Circle K as an organization, there are other organizations like us that work together to serve our communities in this similar way. We're not just one single organization. Um, the other organizations that we are uh, consists of the Kiwanis family. So the Kiwanis family starts with Kiwanis, which is the adult branch of all of our community service organizations. And Kiwanis then helped found new organizations for people of all different age groups to participate in and serve their communities and grow through servant leadership. So the Kiwanis family consists of going from ascending age, K-Kids, which is the elementary school level, Builders Club for middle school and junior high students, Key Club and Key Wins for high school students, Circle K, which is us for college and university students, Kiwanis, which is for adults, and Action Club, adults with disabilities. So although we may be different organizations and come from different age groups, we all together work together to benefit our communities through community service, making the world a better place, and creating the biggest impact that we can as a whole as a Kiwanis family. And as a member of Circle K, you not only become a part of the Kiwanis family, but you have access to meet all these different people as well, outside of your college, outside of your university, and even outside your age group that all share a similar passion as you for service, for leadership, and for fellowship.
Um, so now we're going to talk about um, new and old returning member involvement at the club level. So um, as Amanda said before, you can apply to be on A board and be elected on E board. Um, A board usually consists of positions based on what your club needs, um, such as historian or a service chair or fundraising. Um, and each board position is unique and no one ever really goes in knowing automatically what they're doing. So applying, I guess, just don't feel like you have to know 100% like what you're doing for that position in the beginning. And you can also participate in committees if, um, if a board has them. Um, this is just an opportunity to give your input and um, give your ideas on for that particular position. Uh, both A board and E board are offered and available at the end of the Circle K year and term, but there are other ways to develop leadership skills in order to these positions during the actual year. Um, a great example of this is chairing events because not only do you lead the event, but you also take responsibility of others while representing your club and Circle K in general. Um, there's the membership recognition program, which is pretty much a way for members to be recognized for their achievements and hard work that they've put into Circle K. Uh, members get recognized for all three tenants of Circle K and a lot more. Uh, MRP has certain requirements in order to receive bronze, silver, gold, and even platinum. And lastly, uh, you can do service. Um, that's a, probably the main way that you can get involved as a new member. So another way for you to get involved beyond the club level is division and district. So first I'm going to go with division. Division, just depending on the respective LTG, they'll figure out which positions they would want available for that year. So they could have division committees or they can have executive assistants. Uh, it also depends on who the LTG is and what they would like to have available for their, their year. Um, you can also do inner clubs. So basically what inner clubbing is, you can go to another school and you can go to their service event, their social, yeah. or even attend some of their meetings. Um, next would be district. You can apply for appointed positions, committees, or even attend district events. So for all you returning members out there, I feel you. So as a returning member, I, it may seem easy to kind of think, oh, I've done this, done this before. Um, you experienced your first year of Circle K, and now you're back, and you're looking for more opportunities to get involved. Well, as a returning member, there are still many different ways to get involved with Circle K and to continue to develop yourself in this organization. The first thing, like I mentioned earlier in multiple different slides, is chairing and planning events. Um, no matter how long you've been in Circle K, there's always opportunities for you to, to share events and plan events and even and just create your own from scratch as well. You don't need a position to do this. All you need to do is have an idea if you, and the ability to want to step up, and you can step up and do that. And I know from experience, I've seen lots of members who never had a position who takes charge and chairing and planning events, and I see them grow so much, and I know you can too. Next, another way to get involved as a returning member is through a mentorship system. If your club offers it, you can take on a mentee or a little, depending on what how your club calls it, and through that, you can help spread your experience in Circle K, help encourage your mentee or little to get involved, and together just improve both of your member experiences by doing things together and just having fun and hanging out and all that good stuff. The next thing is helping with district events. So as a returning member, you've gone to most of the district events, hopefully. Um, if not, there's still opportunities to get involved with that and still go. If you're looking to get involved at the district level, in terms of just helping out with the events, there are multiple ways to do so. 
For example, the first way it's hosting workshops. At most of our district events, there are workshop and education opportunities that members can take on and members can apply for. And through that, you get to help spread your knowledge about Circle K and just other things in general, whether they're Circle K related or not, to the other members in our district. You can also be a team captain at fall training conference. Unfortunately, this deadline already passed, but if you're going to fall training conference next year, I highly recommend you do this as you get to help facilitate the fellowship activities that go on during mealtime. It's so much fun. I did it last year and I recommend you all do it too. And you can also be a judge at Crazy Competition for Infants. This event also passed, um, but if you go next year, you have the opportunity to be a judge. You can help facilitate the games, um, keep score, and overall just make the whole competition easier on the host and also just getting the ability to meet other members across the district from either the northern and or the southern half. And then lastly, just one of the simplest ways to stay involved as a returning member is just sharing your experience. You never know what part of your experience will help inspire another member to be more involved and to take that next step. Um, spread why you chose Circle K, why you chose CKI, why you chose to stay involved. And through that, you can help another member grow even further. It's not necessarily about how much you, like you will grow through many different ways. And there's really a, no better way in my opinion than helping other people grow as well. And then you can see that see yourself that, oh, this organization provides so many opportunities to get involved and grow, and I'm glad I got to be a part of someone else's member experience. So now we're going to go into testimonials from our webinar hosts about why we chose Circle K and why we chose to stay involved, starting with Amanda. All right, so why I chose CK, it's because when, before I even started college, the first person I reached out to me was the president at the time, Lawrence. He actually messaged me at 3 a.m. in the morning, which was when I was binge watching Korean drama. Um, so when he reached out to me, it made me feel welcomed. And once I actually moved up to SAC, it made me feel more welcomed because all of the board members here were so welcoming. They always talked to me and I just felt so loved. So that's one of the reasons why chose to stay in CK. Also, I was in Keep Club, so that's also why. Okay, it's my turn. So why well, chose to stay in Circle K? So this is my third year in Circle K. I joined when I was a freshman in college. Um, I was also in Key Club for a couple of years and decided, you know, coming to UCLA, I wanted to have that Kiwanis family background, like stick with me. And even if I wasn't sure if I was going to stay in Circle K, I just wanted to get the experience and just to check it out. And I went to my first meeting at UCLA and it totally blew my mind how spirited and nice everyone was. I was like, oh my gosh, that's why like fellowship is such a great um, like emphasis point on my Circle K experience because without it, I definitely would not have met so many people who in inspired me to stay involved and like people I've seen grow and I wanted to grow like them in similar ways. Uh, I stayed involved a lot my freshman year and went to majority of the district events and had lots of fun and I took on leadership positions after that and still even to this day, like no matter where I get to serve or where I get to go, I always meet new people and I always get to serve with people I never really expected to serve with before. And just creating that wider community from the club level, the division level, the district level, and the international level even has really been something that's kept me involved. And I wouldn't imagine my college experience without Circle K. Um, so the reason why I chose Circle K in the first place, uh, I was never in Key Club or really involved with that kind of thing in high school. And when I first joined Circle K, I thought of it more as like a side thing. Um, didn't really take it too seriously or I never imagined that I would be where I am now. Um, Circle K, they really, it really offers a lot of opportunities to be involved and it really helps you to develop you know, um, leadership skills and a lot more. Um, yeah, a lot of people, they're just, I think in my club in general, they're very welcoming and uh, yeah, I just never expected to um, make so many memories and meet so many people and just be able to um, learn a lot more about, um, just learn a lot more about I guess, myself and help myself grow. So yeah, Circle K offers a lot of ways to 
really improve yourself, I think. Cool, cool. So now we're going to move on to our Q&A session. So if you haven't done so already, and if you have a question, please go to the tinyurl link, tinyurl.com slash KFF webinars questions. We have received responses already. So thank you to those of you who have already submitted questions. Uh, we're going to address some of the questions um, starting now. We'll give you guys a minute or so to submit more questions if you have them. And then as we go along, if anything pops up, please submit them and we will answer them. So just give one second for you guys to submit and we will get started with the Q&A session very shortly. Hold on tight. So the first question I want to address real quickly that was already submitted was how can Circle K and other Kiwanis family branches interact with one another? Um, so it really depends on the Kiwanis family branches and depends on if it's member to member, club to club, um, and beyond that. Um, overall, with just Kiwanis family relations in general, making the connections, I, I feel, is one of the most important ways, like one of the most important things that should be focused on when working with other Kiwanis family branches. So like say if you're working with Key Club from a Circle K perspective, um, you want to make those connections with those Key Clubbers, uh, you want to help them out. Um, such as with programs such as like key to college or a mentorship program or a shadowing program that we offer there's just lots of different ways to do that and like if you want to work with the younger branches like k kids and builders club um talking with your kiwanis advisor the kiwanis advisor for their clubs talking with their school administration to allow you guys to come on campus and like work with them you could even co-sponsor those clubs if you want to um we should have talked about co-sponsoring a builders club and k kids club before and a previous webinar if you want to check that out feel free to look at the link um it's connected to our youtube channel excuse me um and working with kiwanis and action club um outreaching to them like all the, everyone in their branches is super nice and they're down to really collaborate with us um, in lots of different ways but making those connections is an important first step and as long as you guys make the effort and can do that um there are multiple different resources that you can look to you can look to the kff committee um you could just look to your club advisor, look to your board members, other board members from other clubs, um, clubs that may have other successful relations with a certain branch you're looking to do stuff with. And that could be an important first step. Okay, so the next question that we have is what advice do you have for really small clubs, less than 20 members? So, of course, not all clubs are as big as Sac State, UCLA's, UC Irvine's. So, there are clubs, probably like community colleges, where they're much smaller than universities. What I'd suggest is you can always try tabling around campus. It will be a little tough because your club is small already but it's a little start for you guys as well and if anything you guys can also ask for more advice from um other board members or not board members clubs around mm -hmm. you on how they recruited people in or how they worked around it as well <laughs> Um, to add on to that, I think since you're a small club, um, I feel like you should find more ways to get your club name out there. Um, and besides tabling, you can also do social media and you can also try to get involved with, you know, different clubs and kind of partner up. That's also a good way to kind of be known. Um, also, uh, if you have... Um, very few members, I think you can kind of strengthen that and because they probably join for a reason. And so I think you should just take that into consideration because um, they probably want to do more and um, get more involved. So, yeah. Um, just to add on further, um, as a small club, 
I think no matter what, how big your club is, the member experience should be your number one focus. As a new club, uh, not a new club, but as a smaller club, um, you can do like you don't have as many members to tailor to, um, but that doesn't mean that your opportunities are lessened by that. Um, as a small club, there are many still different many there i can't english okay there are still many different ways um to get involved and help your club grow and help your club members have the best experience possible um like I mentioned before publicity is super important for you guys to um, get your name out there if you're looking to grow your club um in terms of being a small club it really depends on the objectives um if your objective is to increase service hours or increase like service opportunities you can outreach to local community organizations you can um look to other clubs and inner club with them um, and leadership fellowship kind of follows the same kind of suit uh, depends really what your focus is. And if you're a small club, you're looking for more ideas, you guys can definitely look to your Lieutenant governor um, for lots of ideas. The Lieutenant governors are a great resource um, for clubs to like get more ideas and have the support um, from the division and district level standpoint. And they have lots of knowledge they can impart on you guys as well. There's so many different resources for smaller clubs. And I hope you guys take that, like take those and be able to run with them. And your club can continue to be successful no matter how big your club gets or no matter how small your club is. So our next question is, how can you get involved more in Circle K on the district level? So there are many ways to get involved on the district level. For example, you can, you can apply on district committees. You don't have to entirely go on to district board. So you don't have to become an LTG. You don't have to become district governor, secretary, treasurer. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, there's always the committees and also the appointed boards. So those would be a great start for you if you don't feel comfortable going onto the elected board of district first. Yeah, I feel like um, when you do or when you consider this, uh, again, don't feel discouraged or don't feel like you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I would say just if you're interested in being on a district committee, uh, just go for it and apply because you never know, um, you know, maybe you stand out and you have a certain, you know, uniqueness to you. Um, yeah, I just, I think um, there are many ways to be involved, uh, not just with district, but you can definitely, those, those options are there for you. And there's a lot of, there's something for everyone in terms of district. And to piggyback further, um, at the district level, there's so many different ways that you can get involved. I think the a good first step, like if you haven't done so already, is just attending these events um, at the district level, just like making connections with people outside of your club, um, like across the district. That, for me, that was really the main way how I got more involved at the district level, just by meeting people. Um, activity doesn't necessarily have to involve leadership positions. Um, of course, it definitely can. And if you want to apply for like district committees, um, the different opportunities that we presented to you guys in this webinar uh, at the district level and beyond that, we highly recommend you guys do if you're looking to get more involved in that sense. But I think like personally, like the bonds I made in the district is what made me want to get more involved at the district level uh, by going to more events and like helping out these different events and being on a district committee. Um, and if you want more information about that, um, of course, talk to the district board um, and like LTG, stuff like that as well. Um, you have so many resources out there, like I say, for everything um, for the district level, ways you get involved. Um, but just like getting yourself out there is an important good step. And like the more you do it, the more connections you can make and the more you can feel included in this big thing we call the CNH district. So the following question is, in your opinions, what is the biggest difference between Key Wins or Key Club and Circle K? So in my opinion, I'm from SoCal, so I had a lot of restrictions in Key Club. I was in Key Club, not Key Wins. So our district in my school was really, really strict on certain events that we could go to. So that really restricted us from going out as well. And because also since Key Club is a high school club. My family was very strict on me 
with going out as well. So when I joined college and also joined Circle K as well, I was able to go out more and bond with the club more often. Um, and for me, I was also in Key Club. Um, I was in Key Club in, back in Sacramento, where I lived up until I moved to college down in LA. Um, so, like similar to Amanda, we had like we moved across like, the state. Um, in turn, in terms of my like main difference, in my opinion, between uh, Key Club Keywinds and Circle K, um, there are lots of similarities. I just want to like point that out that the service leadership is the same. Uh, it's just that the opportunities are different, um, like in a good way and just in terms of the flexibility that you have in Circle K. And like Amanda did mention like, oh, there are certain restrictions in Key Club that don't apply to Circle K. Um, being in Circle K and just being in college in general, there's so many different opportunities to really do like whatever you want to do to improve your growth and improve, like increase your involvement in certain things that you want to stay involved in. And I think that like with those more opportunities comes just like different like means of, you know, performing service, um, getting leadership experience and um, connecting with your other members through fellowship. And I think for me, that was the biggest difference. And I think that's maybe one of the things that brought me in more uh, because there are so many new opportunities. It's not the same thing, um, which may seem like a common misconception between Key Club, Key Wins and Circle K. Um, that, oh, it's just the, like, it's just the Kwanis family stuff over again. Like it's the same, but they're just the different the opportunities and like the tone is just so much different. Um, like both are positive, but I think Circle K is just more flexible. So the following question is, how do you suggest we strengthen our bonds with our fellow key clubbers, especially if it's difficult to attend their meetings and vice versa due to lack of transportation? So I do know some of us high school, uh, not high school, college students don't have cars or do not have their license. Me as well. I actually have that issue. Um, so carpooling is a great way to work around that with college students, with high school students. That is slightly a bigger problem, but we can work ways around it because if you guys are not too far from each other, they can always bus it. They can, I would highly not recommend Uber or Lyft to go to meetings because it is not as reliable. Also, you guys can all, well, buses aren't really needed, but you can take the local bus if that makes sense. Um, to add on to that, um, our um, has a program called the Mentorship Program, and they basically they pair up uh, a college Circle K student with a key clubber, and this is just a way. There's not really it's not really required to like, you know, always meet up with each other and hang out, but it's just a way for them to kind of have a mentor and college about Circle K um, or just things in general. And uh, I think it's pretty successful because um, we mostly talk online or like through text message. So there's always that option. Um, it doesn't always have to be in person, and even though in person um, is probably preferred, it's still a nice way to interact with them in some way. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next question, which is, how can I make a smaller CKI 101 session more interactive? So with that, like if you're hosting a Circle K 101 session for your club, um, it may seem like lots of information, like not many ways to like make it interactive, but there are ways to do it. Uh, one of my favorite ways of making like anything super informational more fun is by incorporating like a game element, um, not necessarily like a Jeopardy session, um, but like if you can incorporate um, like smaller games that covers like maybe different parts of Circle K, like for example, you can do like a game for like each tenant, um, for like just general circle information, um, stuff like that. Um, and even, even like smaller things that you can do that the whole session, like a bingo, or like if you hear this word, like write this or something, um, or incorporate like some like relatedness into your icebreakers or games you play throughout the, the session. Um, those are small things that you could do to make it more interactive. Um, 
like maybe like getting the members more involved with like this session, um, maybe having more people help present or like break into smaller groups um, could be a way you could do that. Uh, depends on who's coming out, depends on the purpose of your Circle K 101, which is a course to like educate, but also like what kind of approach you want to take. And then from there, you can find a way to incorporate uh, more interactive elements to make it more fun and hopefully get more people um, super interested about and fired up about CKI. So to add on to Nick, um, an example would be that I actually hosted a workshop a while back where I created an icebreaker where you get gummy bears and each gummy bear represented a question. So what you do is you put all the people into small groups and give them a handful of gummy bears and whichever color they picked, they had to answer the question given on the PowerPoint slide. Another one would be, this is a Maybe a little bit gross to you guys, but you can toss a shoe into a little pile and each person grab a different person's shoe and everyone will go around asking, is this your shoe? But they also have to go, get to know each other as well. Okay, so the next question that we have is, what's your favorite icebreaker for small groups? Um, depends on, like, in terms of a Circle K setting, it depends on really what the event is. If you're just hoping, or what the purpose of the icebreaker is, if you're looking to, like, make people, like, get to know each other's names, there's a fun game called, like, Name Tag, which I always play, where, like, I put everyone in a circle, um, everyone sticks their hand out, and then, like, you, everyone goes around, they say their name once or twice, and then... Like you keep saying other people's names around the circle and then like once a person in the middle hears a name, they can go hit that person's hand or like high five it. And like if the person gets tagged before they say another person's name, like they get put in the middle and they, like it keeps repeating. Um, that's a fun one for getting to know each other's names because it's super fast paced and like you have to know everyone's name or else you're going to go in the middle. Um, but it's super fun um, in terms of just like lightening the mood and getting people like warmed up for an event. Um like there are small, like different icebreakers you could do. Um, and then there are also some really weird ones. Like my favorite icebreaker of all time is pterodactyl, where like you go in a circle and you make pterodactyl sounds at each other and act like a pterodactyl. It's really, really weird, but it's really, really fun. Um, so like it does depend on the purpose and there's lots of resources you can look at um, for icebreakers and stuff like that in a circle case setting. I think my favorite icebreaker is called um, I Love My Neighbor. And you basically, you all go into a circle and one person is in the center and they say, uh, I love my neighbor who EDM music. And whoever relates to that or whoever, um, yeah, who relates to it, they have to switch places with someone else who leaves the circle too and then pretty much you have whoever's last in this whoever's last to get into it into the circle they have to go next and it's pretty it's a really nice way to um get to know people more and it's a great bonding experience because people are always like rushing to like find a spot um but yeah it's nice to know to find common interest that way For me, I don't have, I don't personally have a favorite icebreaker because I do love all the icebreakers that everyone presents. But the one I really, really enjoy would be the gummy bear icebreaker that I did mention earlier because it gets you to talk to more people around you and get to know them as well, find out where they're from, and just, it just creates a networking process. Okay, so we have two more questions. Um, I'll address the second to last one right now, which is how can I get more involved with Circle K at the international level? So the international level is one where it may not seem there's lots of opportunities to do, but there are still lots of ways to get involved. Um, so for example, 
Um, I myself got super involved with the international level when I went to international convention my freshman year in Indianapolis. Um, going to CKIX and for, like getting involved with those opportunities there was a really great first step for me to get involved at the international level. And I thought, oh, hey, this is pretty cool. Um, so then I applied for international committees, which is a great way to do that. Um, I was I served on the Kiwanis Family Relations Committee as Kiwanis Ambassador last year. And now I'm the International Kiwanis Family Relations Chair. And like there are other people who got involved with that, um, who like with other committees who returned like on the other committees and had a great experience getting involved, um, working with members on a bigger scope in terms of just for um, like your members in the club level, division level, or district level, um, being able to provide uh, diverse resources and diverse like opportunities for members from different districts where things are run differently was super cool. Um, you can also participate in different social media campaigns uh, and you can see like other people's posts. Um, there's also a super cool thing from the membership and marketing committee called My CKI Story. So if you're looking a way to kind of like learn more about other people's international experience, and like see like the big community that Circle K International creates, you can submit your own story. You can view other people's stories um, and things like that. Um, if you can't go to uh, these events or you can't like do these things in person, um, there are different Facebook groups that you can join. Um, you can, we have a Subregion B Facebook group led, which is managed by our Subregion B trustee, Jennifer Quay, um, that you could be added to. If you want to be added, just like let me know after the webinar, send me a message on Facebook or shoot me an email and I can add you um, and send you more information on that as well. Um, there's really a lot of more ways to get involved with international than you think. And if you have any questions about that, I can definitely help you guys out. So the last question that was submitted, it was, what is your favorite, your Circle K moment? So for me, my Circle K moment was when I went to FTC, where I actually got to meet up with a lot of my friends who just joined Circle K and also the friends that I just met wow. in Circle K, which really made me feel really welcomed, even though I did feel welcomed already when I first joined Sac State. Wow. It was really, really nice. But that's my favorite Circle K. That is my Circle K moment. Uh, my favorite Circle K moment was probably um, district convention because uh, that was probably the first time I went to a district event. And it was my first time experiencing, you know, all the cheers and all the spirit and um, to see my club uh, get awards and be recognized. Uh, I felt really proud and I felt a lot of pride in my club. And it was just a really nice way to really understand, you know, what we as an organization. And it was just really fun, even though it was really tiring. And I got to bond with a lot of people um, in my club and outside of my club. Just overall, a really good event because you get to just uh, experience, you know, everyone, everyone's, you know, pride and, um, you know, accomplishments. Okay, and then for me, um, like combining what Angelica and Amanda said, like, Fall Training Conference and District Convention were two super big events for me in terms of Circle K, like just getting involved. But I think for me, when it all super clicked um, was International Convention. Um, like going to district events before, like in fall, like for all the district events my freshman year up to that point, I was already super excited about Circle K and I got to meet lots of different people. But International convention really opened up my eyes to what was beyond just my district and like our district is really really great like I love our district so much um, but in addition to that getting the experience to just see how other members like outside of our district outside the people that we see at our district events like how they do things and like how so passionate they are about Circle K was really what like made me get even more involved starting my second year. Um, I was already in appointed board. Uh, when I went to convention, I just got super like active and I applied for international committees and I got super involved in international convention the following year and in Toronto. And 
I think like since then my Circle K experience really was really brought together. Like just having all the levels of Circle K in my Circle K experience has been the one thing that's really helped push me and keep me staying involved. That no matter where I turn, there's always different ways I can just stay involved, and it's super cool. And I think that that international convention was the big um, key that unlocked that for me. Cool. So I know there are other people who still have questions, but we are running short on time. And if you have questions and you submitted it through the form, we will address them through via email. We hopefully you left your email address in there. We'll send you a response and like send it to you personally because uh, I know we can cover everything. And if you put any questions in the chat box, um, we should be answering those right away um, in the chat box as well. And if you message any of the hosts individually, we'll address them individually as well. And we'll also like talk as hosts to like see if there's any extra information we can give you. Okay, like thank you for all the questions. Uh, I think we really covered a lot of bases in our Q&A session. And if you have any more questions, um, feel free to contact any of the hosts, which I'll show you on the next slide how to do so, and so on and so forth. So cool, so with that, Thank you for coming. Uh, don't forget to sign in on our webinar sign-in link, um, tinyurl.com slash KFF webinar sign-in. Um, super important. So that way, like I said earlier, you can get your hours recorded. And this also counts for membership, member recognition program for attending webinars. So please do that too, if you're interested. Um, all of our email addresses are on this last slide. Um, we'll also the page once we completely go off air. And if you want to write them down right now, please do. And so I want to say um, on behalf of the District Kiwanis Family and Foundation Committee, thank you so much for coming excuse me, to our webinar for this month, for the month of October. We hope you all got something out of it. Whether you're a new member or a returning member, we hope that you learn more about how you can get involved and stay involved in Circle K and use the knowledge that we gave you today to keep moving forward and make the most out of your Circle K experience while you're in college and while you're, you're with us. So. Um, hopefully this helped open up new doors for you. Hopefully this like clarified anything you, you maybe didn't know. Um, and there, remember, there are always different ways to get more involved and different ways to educate yourself about Circle K. Um, depends on where you look. And if you have any questions, you can always outreach to different resources, whether they're online resources or in-person resources, um, such as district board, your president, your board members, lieutenant governors, and beyond. Um, there's many ways to do that. And we hope you guys do that and continue to grow your Circle K repertoire of knowledge. Uh, with that, we're going to finish off our webinar. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, check out the email addresses that we'll be posting on the Facebook page. Um, and also, if you have any more questions, submit on the form um, with the link we provided, and we will address them via email later on. With that, thank you all so much. Have a wonderful night. We hope to see you next month for our next webinar.